In the last lecture, we learned how to capture the values from the form using event listener and event handler function. Now, the question is, what do we want to do with these values? Because we certainly don't want to simply log it in the console. And the answer is, we want to store these values somewhere in the memory so that later when the form will be submitted, we can use these values and display it in our product list. So in the web page, we are displaying this product list. So whenever the admin creates a new product by filling this form and clicking on this add product button, we want to create a new product object and we want to display that product in this product list. So basically, we want to gather all the values from all the inputs in this form and then we want to combine it into an object when the form is submitted. And to do that, again, we can use state. And to use state, First, we need to import useState function from React library. So here, let's use this import statement. And here, we want to import useState from React library. And we have also learned in our previous lectures that it's always a good practice to also import the React object from the React library. So let's also do that. Now, Inside this product form component function, let's go ahead and let's use this useState function. And the argument for this useState function is the initial value. So for the initial value, let's pass an empty string. And here we are passing this empty string as the initial value because when this component will be rendered for the first time in the web page, the input field should be empty, right? So this empty string should be the initial value for that input field. Now we know that this useState function is going to return an array. So here, let's go ahead and let's use the array destructuring syntax. And the array which this useState function is going to return, it is going to have two values. The first value will be a spatial variable which will store the updated state. So I'm going to call it p name for product name. And the second element of this array is going to be a special function which we can call to update the value of this state. So let's call this function maybe update name. And now here, instead of logging the value, let's go ahead and let's call this update name function and let's update the value of this p name variable with the value entered by the user in the text box. So I'll copy this function name and I will replace this console.log statement with that function. And we can do the same thing for other values as well. That means here we can create multiple states. So I will copy this line here and let me paste it four more times. Okay, and for the second state, let's call the variable name as p price for product price. And let's call this special function as update price in the same way let's call this variable this third variable as p description for product description and let's call this function as update description in the same way let's call this variable as p available and let's call this special function as update availability and finally let's call this variable as p image url and let's call this function as update image url and let's go ahead and let's use these functions to update the state so in the second event handler function again i will replace this console.log with this update price function let's copy this update description function and here in this description input handler function let's replace this console.log with update description in the same way let's copy this function name and here in availability input handler let's again replace this console.log with that special function and finally let's use this update image url function and in this image input handler let's replace this console.log with that function. So here, as you can see, 
we are calling this use state function multiple times in the same component function and it is perfectly fine you can have multiple states for a single component and you can set these multiple states using this use state function and all these states inside of the same component will then also be totally separated from each other they will be independent of each other change in one state will not affect the other state so now what we are doing is we are storing the value entered by the user in the form into these variables so we know that these variables will be stored somewhere in the memory and since these variables will be stored somewhere in the memory later in the program we can use these variables to create a new product object and display it in the product list and we will see that in our upcoming lectures now instead of using separate state for each input we can also have a single state which can update all the inputs whenever there is a change and let's have a closer look on this in our next lecture